guys, just want to give you a quick heads up about my new flight controller and the status of it. So what you're looking at here is one of the final production packages that's ready to go out. I've got a big stack of these boards, there's uh, loads of Acro ones, loads of Gilux ones and even more Gilux ones down here, there are loads of them. So the postman is going to be loving me today. Um, here's what the final production boards look like, just focus the camera there, there we go. So this is the bottom one with the barrow on it, and there's the tops of the boards. Very nice production quality. And I did the manual for it as well recently. So let me just refocus again, there we go. So this is just a, a sample printout of what the manual looks like if you print it out on a black and white printer. The PDF of this is available to download on the, um, on the website right now. That was uploaded last night. Quite happy with how that's turned out and there's a bunch of stickers which ATA250 on the IOC channel has made up for me and there's some nice little uh, cards that you get with it as well which have just got some notes about polarity because we don't want people plugging things in backwards and I just thought I'd also give you a quick uh, update and uh, talk about all this stuff that's uh, required in order to get all this this kind of thing going and off the ground so my desk is completely crazy at the moment with the amount of flight controller boards and kit that people have donated and that I also need to use to test the software with. So there's loads of things, there's so many different flight controllers here, you've got old nases, you've got battery monitors, receivers, debuggers, my original Olimexino, which I made up for initial testing of uh, base flight and clean flight when I was first doing development. Uh, you've got Sparky boards, you've got a big stack of GPS modules that people have sent through which need to be tested. Loads of these. There's stuff that uh, Paul from uh, White Spice sent over which I still haven't had a chance to test. Sorry about that Paul. Uh, so busy with everything else. Cable kits, more GPS modules down here, LEDs, you know, some LED stuff in here. This is again new products that uh, Paul has sent over. Every time I place an order with him, he sends some random bits of hardware with it. It's great. You need to test those at some point. Uh, you've got CC3Ds down here, we've got little screens, we've got Bluetooth modules. On my desk there's also the STM32 Discovery test setup that I've been using. This is what I used to originally create the STM32 port. There's also the F103 setup, the test setup here, which basically has got the sensors on it and using a development board here. So this is the kind of stuff that you need if you want to be able to um, program every single pin on the uh, on one of the STM chips and have it do whatever you want. Um, if you try and create your own flight controller by using an existing one you'll find that the pin mappings won't let you do it. Um, that's connected up to again another GPS module, little screen, we've got another spectrum satellite receiver, we've got another little spectrum PPM receiver, sonar modules over here, we've got ESC that was donated by a user who had problems with this ESC, this particular one it's a mystery one. Um, doesn't like um, doesn't like it if the flight controller sends out the PPM signal too late. Um, so that's a really good one for testing with. The firmware on that one is not going to be updated. Uh, what else have we got over here? We've got a Flip32 board. Yeah, I think there was uh, another. Yeah, somewhere in here. There it is. We've got a Flip32 Deluxe board hiding around somewhere in here that Paul sent over. There it is. These are pretty nice, these are actually. If you guys haven't seen one of these, you should check these out. They're quite nice. Although they're not so useful for um, for tricopters due to the way the pin mappings work. So if you've got a tricopter, I wouldn't bother getting one of those because you have to connect the servo to one of the little connectors. But it's uh, it's fine. Um, still very tidy board if you're using quads. We've got uh, a massive stack of USB cables. We've got oscilloscopes over here, we've got my test screen set up, me doing the manual over here. What else haven't we seen? Oh yes, uh, transmitters, we've got uh, Devo 7E with the deviation firmware on it, which is great for testing the DSM2, um, DSM2 receivers. 
I've got this one for which I used to fly before I had the um, the Tyrannus module. Uh, this one I use for testing the UHF uh, DTF modules. Uh, we've got the Tyrannus module over here and a big stack of quadcopters, and th some of which the frames have been donated to the project and some of, and most of which I've bought. This one was donated the other day which is pretty nice. Um, this is one of the Volt frames very interesting board. I've got all the uh, interesting frame rather. I've got all the uh, motors and ESCs and everything ready to go for that to build that one up. We've got uh, a little H quad over here. This is the one I use for testing the one shot stuff out. It's super lightweight. This thing is. It's crazy. Although not the most sturdy of things. Um, we've got a little one piece quad. This one's fun. It's got my LED set up on it. It's uh, great for night flying. This one is doing acro night flying. We've got, let's see, we've got a couple of uh, interesting non-symmetrical uh, frames. We've got, um, non, sorry, uh, X frames. Well, this is a spider frame, which you've probably seen in my other videos. This is great for testing LEDs, night flying, acro flying. We've got this LS, um, LS arm quad, which is a good if you're a beginner because it's got a the shape of it is very recognisable when it's in the air on like a lot of X quads so if you're new to it then a frame that's like this is really helpful for figuring out the orientation because you can see which is the front and which is the back very easily on those really recommend that style of frame if you're new to things we've got uh, uh, a mini quad this is my first mini quad it's pretty heavy by some of the other some stand some of the other stuff that I've got um, but still indestructible. Uh, we've got uh, a ZMR clone over here. We've got uh, an Armaton tricopter, which I finally built up. Not bought the video gear in this one yet. I was out flying this one yesterday. It was great fun. Uh, we've got a V-tail down here. Love that one. They're both Armaton frames. We've got one of the Thug frames, which he kindly donated to me. I've got some new 2207 motors to go on this. That should be interesting. Um, the LED setup on the back of that works really well with the WS2812 LED modules. Uh, this is the one I was using for the um, Forest Time Trial race as well. Awesome frame. We've got one of my larger 450 frames. This is the Aphid Reptile. Underneath it you've got the Team Black Sheep Discovery. That was my first ever quadcopter. I went big to start with. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, we've got my favourite larger acro frame. This thing has got some of the Sunny Sky motors on it. This thing has got um, bags of power and it's super lightweight and looks um, looks great when it's flying about in uh, dusk kind of time as well because of the LED setup that I've got on there, which is pretty nice. And you've got an LS450. This is a foldable one with a little gimbal on the front of it as well. Uh, this is the one I took with me over to, uh, to France and the mountains when I was flying over there. That's great, that one is. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a big stacks of props and things and arms we've got more frames waiting to be built I'm going to turn this and do something unusual with this one this is one of Steph's uh, from Tentech RC's uh, Thug 180 frames but I've got two base plates here and this is going to be turned into a, an X8 that's going to be a lot of fun and ridiculously overpowered with a bit of luck uh, we've got a uh, squirrel frame that's ready to be built up. I've still not got, had the chance to do that from Bungie Cow. Bungie Cow are one of the sponsors that um, make the t shirts. So if you haven't visited their shop, do that please and uh, support Clean Flight where you can. We've got all kinds of things in here. We've got loads of new batteries. Donations for batteries would be very useful because uh, I do churn through them with the amount of flying that I have to do to test all the code that I'm writing. We've got various different ESCs. We've got Bear hug ESCs, we've got the little BL Heli ESCs, 12 amps and 30 amp versions, we've got cable kits, we've got motors, loads of stuff. Too much stuff in fact. And then, <laughs> up in here, you can see that I'm definitely getting a lot better at flying these days because uh, this is my collection of props, there's lots of different sizes in there but uh, I'm not going through them anywhere near as quickly as I used to, which is great. <laughs> And then we've got uh, more bits and pieces for electronics uh, and building quads and so on like that in there. 
there we go so um that's what things are like in the life of building quadcopters and writing quadcopter software enjoy